So sometimes we need to compare two different groups of data. And so, for example, this data comes from a task in which uh, the goal is to move a computer mouse uh, on the to, tar uh, to a target on the screen as fast as possible. So you have to move the mouse and click on a target. Uh, and it was done twice uh, with a small rectangle and a large rectangle, so for two different targets. Uh, and we've collected frequency data uh, and we've created class intervals, um, each of width 100 milliseconds. And so this is our data. Uh, and so to create a graphical representation, one option would be to create a histograms of each of these data uh, on top of each other. This is called a comparative histogram. Uh, and it would look something like this. Now this particular graph is done as a bar graph, uh, where the, uh, the class intervals are the uh, bar labels, a and that's mainly because of the limitations of the software I was using. But you can see that the, the lighter blue here is representing the times for the small target, and the darker reddish color, uh, purple color, is showing the times for the for the large target. And we can start analyzing the, the, the behaviors here using a graph like this. For example, we can tell that the large target scores seem to sort of on average be smaller and, and that they're, they tend to be more clustered, whereas the small target scores tend to be more, appear to be more spread out. Now this is still not a great representation of the data, and so, so another option here would be something called a, a frequency polygram, uh, sorry, polygon, frequency polygon, uh, and the idea is, is basically the same, except uh, we put a dot at each interval, uh, basically at the same height that the histogram uh, would be, uh, and then we sort of connect the dots. Now this is a little misleading because so we're not suggesting that this actually, you know, increases that way, uh, but it gets the idea of, of trend uh, perhaps a little bit more than, than, than the histogram does. Uh, and this is what that ends up looking like. Now, this again sort of gets that idea that the large target values are a little smaller, uh, and a little more compact, whereas the small target scores are a little, uh, more spread out and appear to be slightly larger.